Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to Vision 2030. My name is Anam Chowdhury and I'm the host of this show. Uh, Vision 2030 is a community development program of Channel S working in partnership with the Bangladesh Regeneration Council in the sustainable development of our community here in UK. Um, so that uh, the purpose of the show really is that we work with the communities and with uh, distinguished uh, community members uh, so that we can share some of the successes that we have within our communities but also work with our community to identify some of the solutions to uh, some of the challenges that we have uh, uh, facing in this uh, within our community. For example, 28% uh, of the Bangladeshi population live in some of the most deprived areas, 51% uh, of the Bangladeshi households are living in low income uh, families and also uh, Bangladeshis are three times more likely to be unemployed um, in comparison uh, to the white population and there are uh, many other uh, statistics that really gives us a, uh, a, a poor uh, image of our community so this program is really is working with you uh, the community at home uh, to uh, look at how we can solve some of the issues uh, that we have within our communities in today's show, uh, we will be talking about uh, talking to three distinguished uh, guests about the importance of education, which uh, is uh, which is of um, utmost importance uh, for er eradicating problems uh, within our communities. And also, education is, is is extremely important to bring prosperity to our community. So it's a very important uh, discussion uh, uh, topic that we will be talking to our distinguished guest. But before I go to my guest, I would like to invite our our um, uh, community, uh, uh, people who are watching at home or on Facebook, please uh, do join us by calling in uh, the number they will see later on on the screen. So uh, please join us in this very important discussions that we uh, discussion that will be ta uh, 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 taking place today. So let's go to our guest now. Uh, we, like I said, we have three distinguished uh, guests. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Carl Karim, uh, who is a associate professor in the Department of Chemistry um, uh, with the University of Leicester. Dr. Karim, welcome. Welcome thank to the you, show. Thank you. Thank Delighted you. to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have uh, Councillor Sandra Kabir, who is an elected councillor in the uh, London Borough of Brent and also trustee of the Centre for Voluntary Services and also the chair uh, of the um, of uh, Atlee uh, Centre uh, in uh, in Bangalore Town, isn't it? Yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Dr. Uh, councillor Kabir. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, Prince uh, Sadiq Chaudhry, who is a very successful businessman, a young successful uh, businessman. He's also a former uh, councillor and also parliamentary candidate in Northampton. 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 Yeah. Uh, but, but he's also undertaking a Masters of Law. So there's a lot we can hear from uh, <coughs> Mr. Chaudhry there. So our distinguished guest, thank you very much for coming in from all the way from your places. So we really appreciate you joining us here today. Uh, before we go into the main topic of the discussion, I, I really want to um, learn more about yourself because you are, you have, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, su been successful in your own respective careers and also in terms of your education. So, uh, Dr. Karim, please share with us your educational journey and how important it has been in your success so far. Okay. Well, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Um, well, I'm an associate professor at the University of Leicester, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned. I've been there for four years now. Uh, my role at the moment is research and teaching, so I actually work in an area of nanotechnology. So okay. I do a lot of applied research, and I have a lot of passion for teaching as well. So I do undergraduate teaching, uh, postgraduates, that's masters and PhD. But I'm also responsible for um, careers in terms of employability, so I'm the careers tutor of the department and okay. also for academic integrity in terms of plagiarism. Okay. Uh, some of our technology has been patented so now we have a spin-out company based on our technology as well which is really important so most of my focus has very, very much been on applied research but also the interest is nurturing some of the talent of mm -hmm. the students that we have at the university and obviously the ones that have also been in the past as well. Um, I did my PhD at University of Essex in Colchester, I did my degree there. I also worked at South Bank University, I worked on an MOD project to do with okay. stealth and radar applications. Um, and I'm born and raised in Cambridge, a British Bangladeshi, Siliti Bangladeshi, two older brothers, two younger sisters, the one in the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents came here 
in the 50s, father came in the 50s, uh, mother came in, in the 60s, and um, I've been in academia ever since. Brilliant. So you have a wide range of role within the university. That's correct. You do a lot of jobs, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the focus is, is very much research, and it's applied research. So we work in the area of nanotechnology where we can detect things like drugs, medicated drugs um, for medical reasons, clinical environments, and also things like toxins in the river or impurities okay. in food. So, Do you have uh, other Bangladeshi lecturers, professors? Uh, uh, in, in the department, no. no. Uh, when I did my PhD and I was, uh, and that was in the 80s, okay. I don't think there was a single Sileti Bangladeshi that I actually met okay. when I was doing my PhD. Okay. Uh, in Cambridge, there's not a very large Asian community, even mm -hmm. in the 50s, 60s, when my parents came and when we were growing up in the 70s and 80s with my brothers and sisters. There was very few. There was just a handful of, of Asian uh, people okay. there, uh, Indian, a few Pakistani families, few Bangladeshi families. Yeah. So there was very little in those days in those at days. all. So right. Well, thank you very much for that. And we will go into a bit more details sure. about your successes uh, so far. Um, Councillor Kabir, um, please tell us about your um, educational development and, and how um, important he's been, the education has been in your uh, career so far as a politician and also you are a community activist, you have a, you've, you've led many NGOs in Bangladesh as well as here, so tell us about uh, yourself a little bit. Um, my father is Bangladeshi and mother is English. I was born here, mm -hmm. but I left here when I was 13 years old to go to what was then East Pakistan in 1963. Okay. So I was in school here mm -hmm. up to the age of 13 and then went to school uh, in East Pakistan. Um, and uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't finish my A-levels. Mm -hmm. Um, but that didn't stop me from learning. Mm -hmm. Because of the environment in the family, mm -hmm. it was always uh, self-learning, reading mm -hmm. books, discussing politics, um, uh, keeping up to date with current affairs on, on the television or, or, or the radio. Mm -hmm. So um, many times I did, I did think about going back to education, mm -hmm. but I really didn't have the time. Okay. I, w I was busy doing so many, so many uh, <coughs> other things. But we were all brought up uh, in an environment of, of uh, being aware of what's going on in the world, human rights issues. My father and mother were very big on, on human rights issues, the uh, mm -hmm. dignity of the human being and things like that. So my message actually is it is really, really important for people to be educated and mm -hmm. to go to, through school, college, and university or technical training, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But also education is dependent on yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn, you keep your mind open mm -hmm. and create the opportunities to learn. Brilliant. That's, that's really good. And I think, like you said, you know, education is not just comes in one form. It comes in various forms, yeah. doesn't it? So that's, that's excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, uh, Mr. Chowdhury, um, you are a successful businessman uh, and uh, you've also been in politics <coughs> and um, one of the remarkable um, aspect of your life is that uh, you've, uh, uh, you've managed to go into education as a mature student, uh, you've completed your LLB yes. and now you're doing your Masters in Law. Yes, so LPC, LPC and Masters Give us in law. an insight into yeah. your progression. Thank you. Um, Brother, and I'm, uh, basically my educational journey actually started five years back. Mm -hmm. When I left school, I didn't have any further education. I went straight into family-based business, which is food and hospitality, mm -hmm. which I quite enjoyed myself. Then mm -hmm. I had a little um, uh, area in the politics. Then later stage, I realized um, uh, there's something need to be done because I do need to improve myself mm -hmm. because sometimes I do feel a disadvantage against uh, other people. Then I started, went to the college, did on a diploma in business finance. Then I enrolled myself for the um, uh, Bachelor of Law, mm -hmm. which I have completed last year. Now I'm doing uh, LPC and Master of Law in Birmingham City University. When I was a little kid, you know, all I had the desire, I used to watch a TV, you know, where's uh, courtroom battles in the TVs and all I've been fascinated by the law. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, you have to be really, really smart and clever to be a solicitor or barrister. Mm -hmm. I thought I never can have my potential. Now, mm -hmm. inshallah, with the will of Allah, I'm almost there and I'm very proud and I believe uh, myself, I'm sure I can do that. 
brilliant and, and it's a remarkable uh, yeah. story really i mean yeah. uh, there are many uh, business uh, men and women in our communities uh, who often probably think that look education is not for me yeah. but what you have done is uh, yeah. you've, you've showed a good example of uh, you know being a good successful businessman at the yeah. same time mm -hmm. uh, taking up education absolutely it has made a significant impact in my life especially reading writing is i got more confidence especially on my economic side I remember when I used to work in the restaurants, my earning used to be 250 pounds, that's the maximum I could earn. Mm -hmm. Now with my further investment, I can earn minimum of 1,000 pounds a week, which has had make a significant difference in my life and mm -hmm. also the family in prospect. Okay, that's brilliant. Thanks for sharing that with Thank us. You. <laughs> now I want to go into a bit more details in terms of um, um, the challenges and also the support network uh, to achieve the goals, uh, the educational excellence that you have for your career. So. Uh, Dr. Uh, Karim, um, has there been any, um, uh, in terms of when uh, in accessing education, were there any challenges or barriers for yourself? Um, absolutely. When I was um, growing up in Cambridge, we mm -hmm. really didn't have anybody of any particular mm -hmm. Asian colour mm -hmm. at all. So there were no role models. Mm -hmm. um, the default position was work in your father's restaurant. Mm -hmm. My father had a restaurant and mm -hmm. he was quite successful. But he didn't want that for us. He actually mm -hmm. discouraged us from going into the restaurant business. That mm -hmm. would have been the easy way mm -hmm. to just go into the restaurant business, like a lot of uh, relatives and other family members mm -hmm. did. And he instilled that in all of us, that we needed to work hard and study. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a difficult and challenging time, uh, being Bangladeshi, being a Muslim, mm -hmm. being brought up in, in a sort of a non-Muslim country, mm -hmm. um, even though we're British, as British as you possibly can be. Mm -hmm. um, but it was quite difficult and challenging. I think the two aspects that were really important in order for us to go on that educational journey was the family to start off with. So mm -hmm. my mother and my father were exceptionally supportive. Okay. So my mother was like the religious compass, my mm -hmm. father was like the educational compass. He mm -hmm. wanted us to work really hard and he used to instill that to us at an early age. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I went through education, you can't really do it alone. Mm -hmm. I've had lots of very good colleagues, my, my main colleagues, Sergey and Elena, who I've known for nearly 20 years now. Mm -hmm. We've developed a research group that's the, one of the world leaders in our area. So you can't do that in isolation. You need to find like-minded people that have mm -hmm. the similar aspirations. Mm -hmm. And so you need colleagues, but you also need your family. I think without either of them, you're not going to be as successful as you want to be. So that, 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 there has to be some sort of support uh, network or mechanism there for, uh, you found that to be useful? Yes, I mean, if, um, if we were having some issues or some problems, you'd go to your uncles and aunties and they would just reinforce what your parents were saying anyway, mm -hmm. which is to study and be educated. Mm -hmm. If you can create that catalyst where you just become self-motivated, I know Sanji, mm -hmm. you mentioned that about becoming just self-motivated. I mm -hmm. mean, my father passed away when I was 16 years old, so he mm -hmm. didn't see any of the, our educational achievements, but he instilled that sort of work ethic. You've got to really work hard, mm -hmm. and then you may see some rewards. Mm -hmm. And he saw that as, as an investment, not to go into the restaurant business and earn money very quickly, mm -hmm. which you could do, and a lot of our family members did. Mm -hmm. But the long-term investment, of having a job where maybe your evenings are free, your weekends are free. Mm -hmm. So if you have children, you'll be able to see them. We mm -hmm. hardly ever saw him when he, mm -hmm. when we were growing up because he was there in the restaurant most of the time. Okay. And I think he wanted something mm -hmm. different for us. Okay. And, uh, and, and alhamdulillah, uh, uh, it resulted in mm -hmm. you being a uh, very successful um, uh, academic um, uh, person, a teacher at universities and, and stuff like that. So uh, it's really good. And I think I'm sure your, uh, your parents, your father will be proud of you. Uh, today for your achievements. So um, we'll talk uh, a bit more about support network you mentioned here sure. uh, earlier, but I want to ask um, uh, Prince, um, obviously, uh, as I said, you were a good <coughs> example of, uh, of, of, of going into education yeah. at, a, at a later stage. So uh, what challenges did you, did you face even when you entered education? Uh, the main challenge actually I would say is a cultural change mm -hmm. because my age and also it's sort of like uh, new technologies, which I have to be more familiar. Mm -hmm. Everything is more, it's like internet spaces. And mm -hmm. in my time, we wasn't that uh, uh, knowledgeable about the ITs. Mm -hmm. And then, and most is that sitting in a class with a half a age of the children, which I used to feel really embarrassed. You know, mm -hmm. it's something that I never dreamed about it. But it was a challenge. I thought I, I can't give up. I have to. Be and uh, be positive all the time. And then later stage, especially in the first year, I did have a lot of difficulty with English, especially because the law is a legal joke and it's totally different than what we speak mm -hmm. every day. Then I have to go through the dictionary to understand some of the words, especially on the, on the uh, books 
uh, journals and uh, articles were uh, written by the academics people was very specialized using some of the long and difficult word mm. you know and I couldn't understand at all you know I mean I said oh my god am I struggling myself you know to understand what is the concern and how I should apply those cases to my uh, assi assignments so Slowly, slowly, uh, uh, I managed to improve my English, which mm -hmm. I did manage to understand about 40 percent. In the second year, I went into 60 percent, and the third year, I got about 70 percent, which is a significant improvement myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I managed to get 2.1 upper division, which is uh, to get a first class, you got to have a, a eight overall um, uh, modules of eight. I got six A's and two B's, which is just a whisker away to get a first class for us. Okay. So uh, there were some uh, notable challenges. Yes, it uh, is. But you it managed is, to yes. overcome yes, them. Absolutely. So and what did you do to overcome those challenges? The secret of my success, actually, I'll just mm -hmm. share you today, uh, is mainly because I took myself as a challenge because I went to the sport. Because sometimes sport does help you, actually. I do a lot of play football, I do a lot of running. And it's, it revitalizes your body and mind because mm -hmm. at that age, it's, it's difficult to concentrate. Mm -hmm. You can't concentrate straight away like uh, somebody is 18, 19 years old. You know, I mean, my age, in my memory is going a little bit slow. So I have to work really, really hard compared to my colleagues where they spend one hour, I have to spend three hours. So I start going to the gym. I managed to lose my weight, which was really good, you know, it made me more focused, more light, and make me more, more sharp mm -hmm. in my education. And also, I managed to change my diet, actually. I used to eat a lot of chickens, meats. Then I started going in a sort of like boiled vegetables, which does help, actually, because once you go more lighter, it's, it's mm -hmm. your health is much better, and you can focus more in your education. So you feel more confident. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and then another secret I tell you today, actually, I used to go early bed. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to early bed and wake up very early, especially in the morning, do my fazan namaj. And I, what I find the beauty of it is, especially in the morning, your mind is fresh, you know what I mean? After you've done your prayer, have a cup of tea. And if you do one hour study, that will actually replace your three hour studies. A lot of things which I used to read, used to memorize, especially in the law. You can understand, mm -hmm. you have to know a lot of cases. You could understand how you apply those cases. And it's very important for me to understand those concepts, then I can apply those in a proper way. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So uh, it's, it has been a struggle, but it, it is, it is, you yes. managed to plan it right. And I believe that, you know, I mean, uh, with my age, you know, I'm 45 now, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, started uh, five years back, you know, I mean, I strongly believe if somebody have a determines and they okay. believe in themselves and have a little bit of effort, okay. nothing is impossible. You can achieve whatever you want. And because I believe myself and I know that I have to do that because only way I can change the start of my fortune is having a fair education. Mm -hmm. And I already having the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. And I believe myself and I said, no, I have to do it. You know, I'm not going to give up. I'm not a sort of person who will give up. I will give up my life or rather, but I have to achieve what I'm uh, yeah. determined about. It. Thank you very much. It's, it's really inspiring, really. <laughs> um, coming to uh, uh, Councillor Kabir, uh, you've said uh, uh, earlier that you've, your education and learning was mainly around through family learning, uh, working with the family. So tell us about that experience and I mean, uh, were there any particular challenges in regards to not just education but your political career as well? Mm. Did you face many challenges? With regard to my own um, formal education, mm -hmm. I think the barrier was myself. Okay. Um, I was too busy doing other things. Uh, I got uh, married very early, mm -hmm. and it wasn't uh, an arranged marriage okay. or a forced marriage. It's I wanted to get married early, mm -hmm. and I, I got married early. Mm -hmm. Then I had my first child when I was 20. Mm -hmm. So I was busy, got married, had my first child, then had okay. my second, second child. And I used to play with the idea, shall I go back to education or not? But I really couldn't motivate myself. So okay. there wasn't a barrier in terms of the family that I had married into into didn't want me to study or anything like that. It was mm -hmm. just just me. Okay. And then I got involved in community work. Mm -hmm. And once I got involved in community work, that was my life. Okay. I wanted to change the world, and I still want to change the world. Brilliant. And in particular, I was very impassioned about uh, changing the status of women. Mm -hmm. And I did that by uh, starting NGO work I in Bangladesh. I set up my own NGO, my own charity. And it was to provide uh, women's basic health care and then children's work basic health care. Then we started women's adult literacy. Then we started women's legal aid. And it went on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So I've never really had the time okay. or the self-motivation for education. But it didn't stop me from learning, let me say that. Certainly. It has Certainly. definitely not stopped me from learning. Because the people that you, you mix with, if you want to learn, you will learn. Mm -hmm. I sp I've been speaking to you three gentlemen this evening, and I've learned a lot. 
So you have to keep your mind open mm -hmm. uh, to learn. And also to, I think what's really important is to have that discipline of having a discerning debate with other people. Mm -hmm not just keeping quiet, not just accepting things, but having that, uh, that debate in a respectful way. Right. Um, so s my father was a chartered accountant, mm -hmm. so obviously he wouldn't have been against my education. Of course, of course. My brother and sister are, 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 are graduates. Uh, yeah. my, my sister is an outstanding student. My, my ch children are educated. So it was just me as the individual within the family who decided, no, okay. I've got other things to do in my life. Yeah. Uh, before we go to a break, uh, um, but I just want to ask you one um, sentence. Uh, who's been your uh, inspiration in, uh, uh, in your life? My mother. Your mother. Yeah, simple as that. Sandra? I think it was a, a friend I made in Washington, D.C. She was like a mother and a sister for me, and she, was a, she continues to be mm -hmm. my inspiration, although she's no longer with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of my cousin brother actually, he mm -hmm. studied bar in UK and then later stage he went to Bangladesh. He's one of the uh, justices in Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you probably know Justice uh, uh, Iman Ali, Muhammad Iman Ali. Yeah. Okay. And he always inspired me because what he achieved is absolutely remarkable. That I always dreamt about I wanted to be something like him. Brilliant. And I tried to follow his footsteps. Brilliant. Well, um, as you've heard from our distinguished guest, um, they have achieved so much in terms of their career, educational excellence, uh, but also uh, it's not easy. Nothing is easy in life. Um, uh, they have gone through the challenges. Uh, they've also been inspired by other people uh, in the, in the, from, from within their families and, and communities. And, and that's the kind of successes that we want to see within our communities uh, for now and also for the future. So uh, before you go to your break, uh, we just want to um, just, just let you know that uh, in our second segment, we'll be talking about children's education and the importance of children's education in the sustainable development of our community. And we will be looking at um, uh, what are the barriers for our children, what are the mechanisms that we need to put in place to encourage our children to go into education uh, uh, for, for, for better themselves and also the, the wider community. So we'll be back and please join us uh, uh, in a couple of minutes. Thank you.